Well, hello there and welcome to the candy wallpapered upstairs hallway of the dollhouse for another reading from The Secret Language of Birthdays by Gary Goldschneider and you Stelfers for February 7th, the day of utopia. That's right. And here at the top of the page is a visual representational image of the day of utopia. We have us an image of oh, what could it be? Well, it's a rather simplistic one, just as it has been the past few days, interestingly, because it usually isn't of a bundle of grapes there. That's right. Or is it a clutch? I'm not quite sure the, uh, the wordage there for a bundle of grapes there. But hey, you know what? Not altogether all too important. Does that speak to the day of utopia? Hey, maybe so. I don't know. Maybe we'll make some connotations as we get on with the reading proper. That having been said, what is important around here is it's February 7th, and hence it's somebody's birthday. And so if it's your birthday, I just want to wish you a happy birthday. That's what's important around here. But if this video finds you late, I don't know, days, weeks, months, whatever the case may happen to be, well... I hope you had a happy birthday in that circumstance. Uh, that having been said, a lot of folks like to join us randomly or drop in to celebrate the day and find out more. And if that's the case, I just want to say hello, welcome, and I hope you enjoy yourself. Now, before I start off with the redirect, something I like to do around these here parts, and that's roll some dice. That's right. It is the Diecast birthday broadcast, so I like to live up to the namesake, but I also do more so importantly. For synchronicity's sake, and here I rolled, oh, can you believe it, folks? Oh, the logo is such, a one and a four, four and five. We had this just the other day, surprisingly. Uh, you know what, that having been said, a lot of you probably wondering what synchronicity probably is. So let me try to uh, drill down on it for you uh, real quick before I get into the read. Uh, so a lot of times we get out in this world and we're very singular or laser of focus on things. We're not necessarily uh, lending much concern to the things that happen to cross or present into our path. And as I hear told, the universe will put things in our path to help us realize our goals or manifest our aspirations. But if we're blind to as much or we got the blinders on, if you like to such things, well, hey, we're probably not apt to notice those things. So this is a bit of an exercise to help you get those blinders off and pick up on what the universe or the higher powers that be might be trying to show you. And uh, how do we do that? Well, we got to focus on a sign that we can't help but recognize or take note of. That's right your daily numbers. Now you don't have to go with the numbers I rolled for you. Maybe you don't feel like that's a mutually agreed upon thing, uh, but you know what? The intention is there. That said, maybe uh, you want to roll your own. Hey, it's advisable you get your own set of dice, not just for your daily numbers, but to ascribe directional values to number sets and time limits with which to go in those directions. So that said, you uh, pick a place that's near and dear to your heart or maybe some place you haven't explored before to go out and exercise this thing. And once you get out to that uh, place that you've chosen, say the town square, like I said, get those blinders off because you never know. The day might start to present a theme into your world there if you like. Uh, let's take the visual representational image as an example. Maybe you just start seeing grapes everywhere and hey, you're not in a vineyard I'm imagining. Uh, that said, hey, it doesn't have to be real grapes. It can just be a representation of as much. Kind of take that as a sign that the universe is with you on your path. But like I said, it might not be grapes. We're just drilling down on an example. It could be anything. So you have to keep your eyes open to things that might start showing up regularly. That said, you get your, roll, uh, your dice out, you roll your directional value and time limit set off in that direction now for that pre-described amount of time. Maybe during this course of the leg of your journey, you don't see anything. You know, it's just the everyday goings on of the city at large. Hey, you know what? Never fret. Just compose yourself. Take some time to look around and see what you see. And as I often like to say, you might just notice you might so happen to be on, what's this? Fifth Street. That's right. This the street sign up above. You're on Fifth Street. Take that as a sign you're on the right path. Roll yourself another uh, dice value for your direction and your time limit and set off. And hey, what's this baby? At the end of that time limit, you find yourself in front of... I don't know, a building with could be a 14 in the address. All right, again, another sign. Or it could be anything. It could be like, oh, hey, I keep seeing red everywhere. It's just dominating the day. Maybe the building is painted red. Take it as a sign. Head on in there, and what could this be? Maybe it's a, de a decor shop. I don't know. Hey, you know what? You know what they got for decor a lot of times? Grapes. That's right. Maybe those just so happen to be on sale. Or it's that random object that starts presenting into your life. That's right. Once again, a sign. Maybe someone behind the desk is like, hey, how can I help you today? Uh, are you in the market for some decor? 
hey, be transparent, honest about as much. Be like, no, I'm just here for synchronicity. They're bound to ask you some questions. So, so you know, show them your dice. Show them this video, perhaps. Let them know, yeah, it's just my birthday. I'm trying to shake things up a little bit. And it just might so happen that it's their birthday, too. I know it sounds outlandish, but you know what? This day is about uh, stacking up coincidences, lining up synchronicities, you know, just seeing what kind of magic is out there in your life. And you know what? Maybe nobody else is in the market for decor either so that individual might just close up shop and be apt to join you so maybe that was the whole thing getting out there and meeting somebody new that you share some kind of similarity with right uh, and uh, what's great about that if that happens to be the case you meet new friends and they want to join you hey you know what the more people who are uh, said to join in and and focus on the same results or the same kind of inspiration or drive is apt to beget better results all right so uh like i said take it as a little bit of an experiment just to see that the universe is with you on your side and if you see taste touch smell or uh into it just a little bit of the magic therein i think you understand why i brought it up all right hey let's dive in with the redirect i think you get the idea so your month is february if you didn't know and your day is the seventh your sign is 17 to 19 degrees aquarius of the aquarius two period specifically and your quality and element is fixed air. All right, February 7th, the day of utopia. Those born on February 7th have a social vision and a desire to right existing inequalities. They are among the most idealistic people of the year, but can be mistaken for being harsh, ironic, even cynical by those who do not understand them. It is true that February 7th people are severely critical of life as it is, but not without an idea of what it could be. Their efforts to live by their, their ideals, however, and hopes that others will also, are not always realistic. And those February 7th people less openly critical are sometimes taken for being innocent or naive, primarily due to their natural air and youthful manner. Indeed, they value greatly the sincerity of youth and seek to keep it alive in themselves. And they generally believe that what is closest to divinity, nature, or universal values is the best that there is. Any naivete notwithstanding, February 7th people are usually astute judges of character and students of the human heart and personality. And as a rule, they pick their friends very carefully. And if they take on responsibilities of a family and have children, they emphasize fairness and usually try to remain open to their children's point of view. In February 7, people believe that children can teach us a great deal and that childhood should be as happy as possible. And those born on the stage do not stand for cruelty toward the weak and unprotected. Human suffering has a damaging effect on their psyche, particularly if they do not act to confront it. And many born on this day do become involved in causes, either in their community or on a wider social scale. In February 7th, people can go very far with their thoughts and therefore chafe under the constraints of authority, whether parental or societal. And those born on this day refuse to be muzzled by those who are threatened by their ideas. Valuing spontaneity, they also like to see others express themselves honestly and openly, even if they do not agree with them. And February 7th people are categorically opposed to repression, stiffness, repetitive habit, and reactionary tendencies, which they see as deadening to the human character. And those born on this day have their work cut out for them if they wish to convince others of their views. And they can meet with stubborn resistance from more practical and less idealistic individuals who feel that the status quo, although not perfect, is preferable to change. And though free spirits, February 7 people sometimes have to content themselves with revealing existing problems, making suggestions, and allowing others to either take it or leave it. Uh, and should they be intent on forcefully impressing their ideas on others, they must be prepared to face rejection, outright hostility, 
and even ostracism. All right, pretty interesting birthday breakdown today. And I say that because the past uh, uh, period, going back to the beginning of Capricorn, it would seem the days are usually very hyper-focused on the theme. And then they expand out from there. And then some days they didn't really even expand out. They would just keep hyper-drilling down on the personality and, and how that theme worked into it. Here I would say today was pretty well-rounded. They got into uh, uh, your family, what your personality might be like from a, a myriad of angles how you might relate to children and such. You know, and a lot of times these past few days, they haven't really done as much. They've been kind of coming out of this, uh, what do you call, um, uh, typical pattern here. But again, it's still been rather hyper-focused. Today was a little bit focused, but like again, I like that they rounded it out here. Uh, but I might be getting ahead of myself. I like to provide a little bit of commentary on the breakdown, maybe make connections with days previous, and just things I found interesting in general, and go back over what we uh, related here in the breakdown. So let's dive into it, all right? Uh, February 7th, the day of utopia. Uh, you are among some of the most idealistic people of the year, the reading said. And you're also said to have a vision of society and a desire to correct inequalities. And this may be seen as the reading claims as being overly harsh, ironic, or brash by others. Uh, which more or less uh, makes sense considering uh, even mildly idealistic people tend to go after their respective causes with a fiery passion. Um, all told, however, you may be quite different from the other weekend warrior idealists as you may actually have an idea of what your idealized world could be. I like to think, or you know, it kind of seems like the general consensus is those other folks are rather myopic in their vision. They're just chasing after that one cause and whatever comes after that isn't really their concern. Uh, you know, they're just very focused on what's going on in front of them. And I, I get the, the impression that that's not necessarily the case with you here. Um, some of the other so-called idealists, I'm not altogether convinced of their commitment to the cause, to say. And one day they're up in arms with, uh, within the, uh, the, what do you call, um, modus operandi of what's going on there. Uh, and then uh, the next day, hey, you know what, it's on to the next thing. Uh, but, uh, and they're also, th they might be throwing expletives and rocks over it that one day, and the next day they might actually be in concert with it. They might be endorsing it. So it's a very fickle thing, this idealism, I would say. Um, uh, or flighty, in, in another way of speaking. But with that in mind, uh, the reading claims your hopes others will live up to your convictions may not be very realistic in your case. And to this end, words like naive, innocent, and youthful are used to describe how to keep yourself pushing through life. Uh, quality, I, you know, I kind of find it admirable, uh, even if, you, uh, if there are negative associations with this much. Uh, but those perceptions aside, the reading claims that you're a great judge of character. Uh, you pick your friends carefully. Uh, let's say you empathize fairness with children and, you sh and should you decide to have them. And uh, you're empathetic writ large. Uh, furthermore, to this end, you're said to act on it, all right? A lot of other folks don't necessarily act on it. They just feel it, right? Uh, and Or you might chance feeling guilt over not acting. So, you know what? There's this baked-in element for you uh, to, to chase after those things you're feeling. And not necessarily as much with other folks. It kind of might border more on sympathy versus empathy. And I would argue the sympathy has its place, but it's not nearly as powerful. Um, so what else did I have to say here? Um, with, uh, so you're an idealist who's, you know, any idealist worth their salt, you're said to take particular issue with those who may suppress your ideas and your aims. And even more admirably, you're said to extend this feeling of freedom of expression toward others. Uh, you know, and they have a right to do so, even if you don't agree with them. And I would say a lot of other, uh, those weekend warrior idealists, they don't feel that way at all. It's my way or the highway in a lot of cases. Um, so uh, you also have, um, you know, uh, there's a, for you, a static tendency is like a death knell. There's a dynamic build to you improving and wanting to see things come and, and become better. Uh, I would say focusing on just one thing for these other folks is a rather static idea, even though there, there might be some, uh, uh, what do you call it, motivation or of toward a dynamic change baked into it. But it's still kind of like, yeah, we're, what are we doing here? You're just focusing on the one thing. There's no real exploration or building out of that idea. 
I don't know if that, I don't know if that makes sense, but I, it seems to make sense to me. You know, they're not they're not going for what's beyond that one change, so it's a little bit static in that reality. Uh, that also said, uh, uh, the reading conveys that you're apt to encounter stiff resistance in your endeavors, uh, which I'd argue um, you're well aware of and uh, just might be. Now, let me get the book here. I had to carry on from the page. It might be the exact kind of dynamic that fuel, uh, further fuels uh, your drive to realize that utopia that you see in your minds. All right. I do wonder if you would be happy if said utopia was actually realized or reached, uh, as it very well may be the effort and work that goes into that realization that is actually what drives your life's ambition. I think it might be the purpose that you're going after that is more so the focus for you, not necessarily reaching those ends. And I know that kind of sounds outlandish, but I think it might be the case here. Those other folks are focused on just the thing, and I think for you, it's a little bit of the process. Uh, um, I could be wrong, but that's what it sounds like to me to some extent. Um, so like I said, a very well-rounded birthday in my opinion, especially compared to the days previous, weeks, months previous almost. Uh, but I would have liked to know a little bit more about this youthful focus that they said one of the personality types had. Uh, maybe even expand out from there to say what the other personalities were maybe like. Uh, but that said, I still think this thing had a lot of value regardless of that. And who's to say they might just dive into that a little bit as we move on to the other sections of the birthday read. So let's do that now. Let's move on to your numbers and your planets. Let me get the book back here. I'll send it on camera for you. Those born on the seventh of the month are ruled by the number seven in the planet Neptune. And Neptune is the watery planet ruling visions, dreams, and psychic phenomena. And February 7th, people are prone to these unstable influences. A Neptune-Uranus connection, Uranus rules Aquarius if you didn't know, indicates openness to change and a healthy desire to loosen existing taboos. And those born on this day must avoid getting out of touch with reality by overemphasizing their dreams and aspirations. Also, they must beware of suspicious or unsubstantiated psychic and occult activities. And those ruled by the number seven traditionally enjoy change as well as travel. Well, all right. This was a highly personalized numbers and planets entry. There was a little bit of boilerplate stuff in there, but they added a lot of interesting aspects to it. Uh, specifically, one that stands out is this uh, psychic and occult thing that you uh, need to be suspicious of. All right. They're really leaning into the, uh, the visions and dreams aspect of Neptune. Uh, but hey, let's dive into the notes. I might be getting ahead of myself here. Uh, the number seven in the watery planet of dreams and visions, Neptune. Uh, also said to rule psychic phenomena and leave you prone to unstable influences. Uh, all told, ideas and ideal, ideals are a uh, mental concern, a consideration if you like. Uh, so it's not unfair to suggest uh, one not get out of touch with reality. Uh, with that in mind, if you like, uh, people ruled by Neptune tend to have their head in the clouds in, in one manner of speaking. Uh, to say they have a focus on that which is above grounded earthly concerns. Uh, we're more directly put, uh, for you specifically, high ideals, morals, and ethics, I would say. Uh, now, there are Neptune folks with their heads in the clouds with over actual dreams and aspirations, fantasies, art, and the like, which have no real bearing on real-world earthly concerns. Uh, but that said, uh, considering you deal with higher ideas directly concerning earthly issues. Uh, when I saw that this day was ruled by Neptune, I, I immediately understood. It totally made sense to me, even though you deal with earthly concerns in your own way. It's just you come at it from a Neptune, high ideal, uh, otherworldly manner of speaking. Uh, so I don't think it's necessarily fair to say you have your head up in the clouds. That's kind of why I went on this little diatribe about as much. Uh, like I said, I think I can see why uh, that would apply there. Uh, what else do you have to say here? Uh, uh, Uranus's influence is said to indicate openness to change and a desire to loosen taboos, as they mentioned here in the entry. But it's also by itself said to lend toward a desire to change the rules. And I find it interesting they didn't put this in here. There's also a baked-in rebelliousness with Uranus, and that wasn't in here either. And I would say those aspects totally dovetail into uh, folks who get out in the world and follow their ideals and try to change things. 
Uh, so I'm glad that I could impart that for you here. Uh, but I could totally see how this element would lend to shifting your dreamy focus to earthly concerns as well. Because uh, Uranus is said to shake up and electrify the planet that it is uh, coupled with. And so it might just kind of flip the dreamy vision aspect of Neptune on its, on its face there and kind of put you back down toward Earth a little bit more so. So again, if that uh, astrology, uh, astrologically speaking, it might kind of make sense that you have your head in the clouds, but for earthly concerns, considering that dynamic. Uh, so that having been said, that's what I had to say about your numbers and planets. So if you took something of value, something to consider there, as we move on to your tarot card. That's right. Here we are diving into one of the more eclectic of the New Age metaphysical ideologies. But hey, it's here in the book. We don't have to take it home with us to start dealing out the cards to uh, you know predict or inspire our every whim or flight of fancy. Uh, but hey, we just see what it has to say. Sometimes we can make more connotations, see where it lines up with the book, and then we can just leave it there. So yeah, let's see what else we can derive here for your birthday with your tarot. The seventh card of the Major Arcana is the Chariot, uh, which shows a triumphant figure moving through the world, manifesting his physical presence in a dynamic way. The card may be interpreted to mean that no matter how narrow or precarious the correct path, one must continue on. The good side of this card posits success, talents, and efficiency, and the bad side suggests a dictatorial attitude and a poor sense of direction. All right, uh, this one was a total copy paste job here. They didn't, uh, they didn't even tack on anything to say like, hey, you should be mindful of this. Sometimes they do that, but not all together all the time. So uh, let's see what I can derive out of it for you here for you. Uh, the uh, chariot for manifesting physical presence in a dynamic way. Does that sound like anybody we know? I'd say it does, all right? The card posits success ostensibly if you fall in your chosen path, regardless the difficulty but also talent and efficiency to those ends. So right down the line, I would say it speaks to the breakdown as it was laid out, assuming it applies, all right? Uh, but be warned of this dictatorial attitude and uh, poor sense of direction, all right? You don't want to get off your path. Uh, uh, I would say Billboard Hot 100, I can see this applying to someone who chases after changing the status quo. Uh, especially baked in passion that idealists uh, tend to possess, all right? Uh, so it could get a little dictatorial. You could start barking at people, tell them how they need to do this and need to do that and change their ways. So yeah, don't let that get out of hand, all right? Uh, more, more, uh, more flies with honey kind of thing, right? Uh, if you kind of get in there getting all aggressive with the folks, they're, they're not apt to uh, see your side of things. So, yeah, I think this was a very apt card with all things considered. So pretty interesting. Uh, that having been said, that's your tarot. So let's move on to your health. All right, your health. Here we go. Those born on February 7 are generally open to various up-to-date remedies, cures, and forms of treatment. However, they instinctively realize that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, and therefore pay mind to keeping themselves healthy. Yoga, Tai Chi, meditation, and Shiatsu massage may help them rid themselves of excess stress. In February 7, people should, however, be wary of fad diets, particularly when the object is weight loss. However, a modern approach to food and cooking is good for February 7th people as they usually enjoy exotic ethnic cuisines as well as healthy basics to say fresh vegetables, whole grain breads, yogurt, nuts, as well as fruit. And they are best suited for light, fun diet. Moderate daily physical exercise is recommended and perhaps early morning jobs, uh, jogs rather, or swimming if possible. Though, hey, you know what? Maybe early morning jobs would help you out too, who's to say? <laughs> All right, but that said, let's dive back into the notes. You picking up a pattern here? All right. You're generally open to various up-to-date forms of uh, treatment, which is interestingly, is interest rather, <laughs> interesting rather, as it's a bit of an Aquarius through line uh, for a fickleness with health concerns. So uh, you totally buck this trend here. Uh, that's why it's interesting. 
Uh, and you're a bit of a outlier here, uh, if you don't mind the uh, ironic aspect there with the more mental forms of exercise that they said is interesting for you. Um, so yeah, with regard to Neptune uh, days, you're usually getting suggestions. They usually get suggestions to help keep them grounded. Uh, here for you, I didn't necessarily pick on that up on that so much, especially when they uh, they get into the mental aspects of things to help uh, help you exercise with Tai Chi and the, and the yoga and meditation. But that said, I could see how there'd be a lot of baked in stress with your uh, chosen field of endeavor, your passion, if you like. Uh, so it makes sense that there'd be some aspect or avenue into, um, you know, avoiding that with your meditation, if you like. Um, also, typically, uh, uh, exercise for Neptune folks is stuff that's to help bring them back down to ground, it's like vigorous exercise. Um, at least that's the that's what I draw from it. Uh, here, you just got moderate exercise, so a little bit boilerplate in that regard. Nothing too interesting, uh, but yeah. So drill down on uh, the ways to alleviate stress there, um, if that makes any sense. <laughs> I think I skipped the lines. So something I said in there didn't. Uh, that said, keep keep pressing on, all right? Your diet is an anomaly also, considering Aquariuses haven't been getting diet recommendations. Certainly not to the extent that they gave you like a whole list of things you may like to uh, get after and enjoy. Um, but that having been said, I also like to add in that um, the Aquarius body areas are the uh, circulatory system and the lower legs and ankles. And so there have been some suggestions here and there for heart healthy type diets and things to help avoid stroke and embolism and the like. Uh, I also have been uh, taken to recommend people get some compression socks because those sorts of things have been coming up also like varicose veins and like I said the embolism and whatnot. And since the lower uh, legs and ankles are a body area, hey, why not uh, kill two birds, right? Uh, also that being said, the Capricorn period, they had the... Uh, the veins and the skeleton is a body area, so very similar to Aquarius. And they always were getting, well, not always, but very often they were getting recommendations to cut out animal fats and dairy fats, uh, ostensibly to keep cholesterol out of their diet. And so since that lines up very closely with uh, the Aquarius period here, I would say that's a great recommendation too. But it sounds like uh, you've got things well in hand if you have a preference for the things they listed. Um, and also this exotic ethnic cuisines and, and varying your diet. Capricorn always was religiously getting recommendations to expand their culinary uh, endeavors there. And so I was thinking, well, maybe that's so that they incorporate fresh ingredients. So it sounds like you got a little bit of a, a Capricorn thing going on here, even though I know you're not at all related to it. Uh, but that having been said, just that through line, like I said, I like to make connections with past uh, periods and days, etc. So I thought you might find it a note. Uh, that having been said, that's been your health, so let's move on to your meditation. That's right, it's your birthday, you get a meditation. All right, here we go. Oh, I'm sorry, I got ahead of myself. Let's move on to your advice. That's right, you'll get a meditation, but let's get the advice in first. All right. Though you can change but a small piece of the world. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay, though you can... Uh, you can perfect yourself, all right? Work on overcoming your personal weaknesses and set an example for others. Remain open and idealistic even as you mature. All right, uh, they threw me off there with the sentence structure there for a second, uh, but we said it right, they said it right there. Rather. So uh, let's dive in with what I had to say about what they had to say. Uh, you can perfect yourself, all right? I love this, all right? Don't neglect yourself. Uh, don't get I, though I didn't get the idea that you did so it's a little bit weird that this came in here uh, but don't let your passion take over uh, to that end okay uh, I would say if uh, uh, Capricorns have a big uh, issue with uh, burning themselves out or just uh, going after their uh, their career and not minding their health or their family or anything but uh, to what end right if your passion is your your uh, your career or your cause if you neglect your own health well then at the end of it Who's going to be there to pick up the uh, to pick it to pick up the bag for you if you're not there to carry it, right? So there has to be a balance there, I would say, and that's kind of uh, why it dovetails in with Capricorn very nicely. Uh, so yeah, you can't uh, though you can change a small piece of the world, you can perfect yourself. All right, and you also I think it also speaks to uh, not giving everything to the cause. You have a life too, right? Um, all right, what else did I have to say here? So they said, set the example for others, although I think I'm skipping one again here. They said, work at overcoming weakness. 
And you know what? I didn't like this one because it's just a little uh, anomalous. It's also very common, uh, toothless, kind of uh, non-specific boilerplate, right? Of course, that's something to do. We can overcome weakness. And typically, the advice I'd say is very valuable. It's very specific. That is just so broad sweeping. It's, it's anomalous that they included that. Uh, so moving on to set the example for others, uh, I, I'd say that's better advice here. That's something more along the lines of what they should be imparting here. Um, uh, for someone also looking to change things and inspire others, uh, you know, words are great, but actions speak louder. Uh, and you're also apt to get more people over to your cause if you're out there setting the example, not just telling people what to do, right? Because then they'll be like, well, what are you doing about it, right? just talking to us about it so yeah I think that's a great piece of advice uh, it's also said remain open and idealistic even as you age and I don't know why this comes up I didn't see uh, you necessarily giving up on your intrinsic nature even if you were getting older uh, so much as maybe uh, losing a little bit of your fire sure everybody does so as they get older uh, so you know to that end keep burning all right don't set your torch down uh, but what's huge for an idealist is being open to conversation and information in general, I would say. Uh, what if everything you think you know and stake your flag on with regard to your cause is only part of the story? It's only one aspect of the narrative. And what if the rest of it, uh, this whole narrative, uh, changes all of that, right? There might be something going on with the company that you're going after and... And maybe they're a little corrupt, that they're just hiding it from people really well. And everything you've put after this cause, well, now it's been done in vain, right? Because the other thing was so much larger and worse. And if you were to know the whole story, well, it's something you would have been opposed to. Yeah, that's right. So be open to things, I would say. I would say a lot of times, a lot of these idealists, you have an idea that they're very closed-minded. They're not open to, you know, having a conversation. And I say if you're open to having a conversation, well, you're apt to, again, attract more people. Say, hey, I think they're very rational. I may not agree with them. At least I'm going to listen to them because they're open to listening to others. And they said you're open to that here in the breakdown, too, that you uh, recognize the right of other people to share their ideas, all right, even if you don't agree with them. So I would say this is just an excellent thing to reiterate that because it's a great quality. Uh, so stay open. That's right. And I think that's just about everything I had to say about your advice there. There was, uh, like I said, they, a lot of value with some of them and a couple of them just eh, not so much. But hey, here nor there. That's an anomaly. It doesn't always happen. So uh, that said, that's been your advice. Advice rather. Now let's move on to your meditation. That's right. I had you waiting for it with anticipation, didn't I? <laughs> Maybe not. But here we go. Your meditation. An ideal world can only be created by ideal people. Oh, very interesting. I think I can see why they chose it for you. <laughs> That's right. Here we go. Once again, an ideal world can only be created by ideal people. All right. Hey, uh, it's your meditation. That's your birthday. I'm not going to throw my uh, spin on it or what I think it means. I do find it interesting that it seems like it's something that's very easily accessed. And a lot of times uh, meditations are a little bit more enigmatic. You got to give them some consideration. Not to say you can't drill down and derive even more than what seems like it's on its face. But this one's a little bit of an anomaly, too, because it's it seems like it's pretty easily understood. So. Very interesting in that regard, too. But once again, an ideal world can only be created by ideal people. So I don't want to say it doesn't have value, but it's just interesting in that it seems like it's something we can interpret pretty easily. So any of it, hopefully you derive extra meaning out of it for yourself. So that said, that's been your meditation. Let's move on to your strengths and your weaknesses. That's right. Let's hold up the objective mirror and see where you got the girth, if you like, and we otherwise maybe a little more deflated within the metaphor there. That's right. Your strengths. Here we go. You're human. You're natural. And you're spontaneous. All right. I like that. I think that's the first time human has come up. Interesting. But your weaknesses. Oh, that's right. Let's hold that objective mirror back up and flip it to the side that blows up your face. Maybe shows off the things you're otherwise a little more superficially insecure about within the metaphor of the mirror there. That's right. Your weaknesses. Unrealistic. Over permissive. Interesting. That one's never come up. I'm not even sure what to make of that. And dissatisfied. 
Interesting. I don't know that I picked up on dissatisfied. Well, I guess dissatisfied, like you're not happy with what's going on, the status quo. But that's why is that a weakness? Ooh, maybe it's too dissatisfied. I don't know. Maybe it, it colors your perception uh, to, to a negative extent. Who's to say? Uh, that said, I often like to mention that um, our strengths can be uh, weaknesses and our weaknesses can be strengths, just depending upon the situation as well as the individual. There was one day a few months back where um, uh, the, in, the strength of impulsive came up and the very next day was a weakness. So it got me thinking on that track, like why is, where's the disconnect there? So I, uh, I've been taken to make the argument that uh, you know, our weaknesses can also be strengths, all right? Unrealistic, uh, over permissive, dissatisfied. Well, hey, let's take the concern for the individual who may need you to be a little bit more, uh, what do they call it, dictatorial, all right? You need to be unrealistic for some folks because uh, they don't hear you unless you're barking orders. I was in the Marine Corps for six years. I know that all too well. Didn't work for me so well, but I know there were plenty of folks who needed to be barked at. So I could see in that regard such things being a strength all right your strengths your human natural and spontaneous if you did want to improve upon your so-called weaknesses i would say those are things that are going to help you do as much um, spontaneous you're going to come up with something that helps you work through it uh, in a natural human way i'm a little surprised none of the neptune stuff came in with the strengths there uh, though maybe they do they're just not necessarily on their face it's more in between the lines but in any event hey i also like to say and so far as your weaknesses are concerned don't get rid of them altogether because i think you know not only can they be strengths like i said but they also are part of who we are all right and so that's baked into the whole pie if you like so yeah don't dismiss them outright or altogether any event that's been your strengths let's move on to those born on this day when we get into those born on this day something that i like to do is look at it through the uh the filter of i don't know figuring out our passions and this seems like a very specific thing for you as well here and so maybe all all the more important um especially if you don't necessarily know what your passions are you haven't picked something to chase after uh, you know, because a lot of times I get out in the world, I meet individuals and ask them what they do, and more importantly, if they like it, and they don't. And so I think, you know, that's something we should be striving for in our daily life, something that we find fulfilling. You know, we get into a job, and maybe it's just something simple to do because we've been doing it for so long. We hit the autopilot, get after it, fill the coffers, and then, you know what, the weekend comes along, we kind of regroup, and then we're at it right, we're back right at it again the next week. But uh, there's something missing, and a lot of times at the very root of things is that we don't have a purpose or a passion so I think it's important and this is the perfect opportunity for us to maybe start thinking about that because if there's anything I can wish for you on your birthday it's that you're driving after something that gets you doing backflips out of bed in the morning to get on with your day and maybe find personal fulfillment from right and then uh, maybe you can also find a way to make it lucrative and sustain your lifestyle so you can keep doing just that more of the stuff you find fulfilling so uh, maybe you've already figured that out and if you have you know what the, the hat I'm not wearing is off to you uh, but hey maybe you just enjoy who shares your birthday so let's get into it here we start off with Charles Dickens the British Victorian novelist of Oliver Twist and a Christmas Carol and lived rags to riches kind of life uh, let's see here. Sinclair Lewis, a novelist and the first American to win the Nobel Prize for Literature, uh, ostensibly with the work Aerosmith. We also have an A-R-R-O-W, Aerosmith. We have Laura Ingalls Wilder, a novelist of, and a children's writer of The Little House on the Prairie Books. Sir Thomas More, uh, M-O-R-E More, not two O's, a British saint, theologian, philosopher, and responsible for the work of Utopia. Though I thought his name had, did have two O's in more. I was to say, they might, might be a typo or I might be misremembered. That said, beheaded by Henry VIII for treason and canonized. All right, we have Anne Wang, a computer genius, uh, an entrepreneur, and famous for the Wang Corporation. And he was the founder. We have uh, U.B. Blake, a ragtime jazz pianist and composer, and wrote and performed concerts into his 90s, it says. Uh, someone chasing a passion for sure. All right. Alfred Adler, Viennese social psychiatrist. Juliette Greco, a French dancer and a film actress. And it says an existentialist icon. Interesting. 
Uh, you wouldn't think uh, that from a dancer. Um, what else do we have here? King Curtis, a jazz rock and roll tenor saxophonist, as well as a band leader. Uh, Stuart Davis, a painter and an illustrator. We also have Buster Crab, C R A B B E. I'm assuming it's Crab. Uh, it might be Crab A, or uh, but any event, a bodybuilder, fitness expert, and a film actor of Flash Gordon fame. Guy Talese, a writer of Thy Neighbor's Wife. Uh, Russell Drysdale, an Australian painter. We also have Raymond L. Uh, Bisp Plinghoff, uh, an aeronautical engineer. Daryl S. Jackson, an Australian architect. Eddie Bracken, a film actor. We also have Alfred M. Worden, a U.S. astronaut. Osep uh, Gabrilovich, a uh, Russian pianist. And we also have Norman J. Anderson, a combat aviator and a U.S. Air Force Brigadier General, and finally, Merrill Womack, a gospel performer. All right. Hey, I didn't necessarily pick up on a lot of idealists in so many terms there, at least not on their face. But you know what? A lot of artists, a lot of, uh, what do you call it, individuals who may have had their head in the clouds, maybe not figuratively, but literally with the astronauts and the aviators there, for sure. How about that? In any event, I know it's a big ask, uh, tall order, to try to take inspiration from other folks and their accomplishments. But hey, maybe me just putting the bug in the ear about it help you stir up the fires and start driving after a passion, all right? Something to get excited about. It's like I said, if I can wish for you for any, wish for anything for you on your birthday, it's that you're figuring out a, a passion and driving after a purpose and finding some personal fulfillment. That's right. Uh, that having been said, I might have butchered a name or two in there, so let's make up for it on my side of things. Not done in malice, just hooked on phonics isn't the worst, uh, the most practical method to sound out names. So in any event, that essentially rounds out your birthday reading, except to say your season is winter, your sign once again is Aquarius, of the Aquarius two period specifically, and your quality and elements is fixed air. And this has been February 7th, the day of Utopia, from the Secret Language of Birthdays by Gary Goldschneider and Eust Elfers. I have an affiliate link for this book down in the description. Up above, a personal message I like to put out there for the birthday boys and girls. So, uh, you know, look for that if you're interested in picking up a copy and you'll save the hassle and to type it in in a browser. It makes an excellent coffee table book if you're apt to throw a party and have a little bit of difficulty getting the ice broken or you want to do so in a more captivating, interesting way for a change. You know what? The book's going to get it done for sure. And it's going to get the conversation started for better or for worse. That's right. But that said, the book having been relayed, not altogether all too important. What is important, like I said at the beginning there, wishing you a happy birthday. So once again, happy birthday. That's right. And uh, for everybody else who joined us, hey, I hope you enjoyed yourselves. Took something of value, even if it wasn't your birthday, because a lot of these things very valuable, useful information a lot of times. So yeah, hopefully you picked up on something that you took away and could apply to yourself. Uh, but lest I forget, hey, you know what? Your daily numbers. You know, get out there, let the universe show you it's with you on your path. Uh, see, taste, touch, smell, a little bit of that uh, magic I mentioned. Stack up some coincidences or synchronicities. Hey, you'll understand why I brought it up. Uh, but all of that having been relayed there for you, I just want to say uh, thank you for the uh, privilege of your time. It was a pleasure to share your birthday with you. All right, I have a lot of fun putting these together a lot of times. Sometimes it's a little more difficult than you may think, at least for me. So, uh, you know, it's a little bit of a, a passion to get after it there, if you like. So that said, once again, happy birthday. Get yourself some compression socks, ward off those varicose veins and the strokes you may be susceptible to, and keep chasing after your ideals, I would say. All right, even if you have to get a little dictatorial on some folk, I would say. But hey, Keep it measured. Keep it measured. All right. Hey, once again, happy birthday. Take care of yourselves.